Yeah, Rash is a really good player. Um, he's a big part of our group, uh, so we're excited to get him back. It's sort of potentially still just 22. What sort of room for growth do you see from this season? Yeah, I think there's always room for growth. Uh, you're always trying to get better, no matter if it's your fourth year, your first year, whatever. Um, you're trying to improve, so I think um, I think he's got a high ceiling. He's got a good skill set. Um, he's in a good position here with this team to, to play minutes and to play with good players, so I think it's a good opportunity. You guys have been going through a bunch of injuries, but good to see Jake back. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's always nice to get uh, people back from injury, and uh, he trained hard all off season, and uh, so I mean I think he's looking forward to getting back in the fold and getting out there with the guys. So it's always nice to get people back like that. It might be a dumb question, but how important is he to you guys? No dumb questions around here. It's all good. Uh, Muzz is a, you know a huge part of our back end. Uh, he plays tough minutes. He. He, he's he's got good leadership qualities and uh, he's important to the penalty kill. Uh, he's important to you know what we're doing as a group in terms of our systems and you know trying to figure that out. And so to get him back in the mix is is important for us. What's your comfort uh, level on the right side if you're taking rest? Right? Yeah, I think you just try to get used to it. Um, I've done it before, uh, so it's just, it's just a matter of you know over time you become more comfortable and you just work at it. Um, it it's, it's actually nice in the offensive zone. You get to walk to the middle on your forehand, and like there are actually perks to it. Um, it's just a matter of getting familiar with it. So if those are the perks in the offensive zone, what would be, I guess, the biggest challenge? Oh, I just think, just generally speaking, you got to handle more pucks on your backhand, and it's just not overly familiar. I mean, you're used to being on one half of the ice, so when you get to the other side, it's just, just you know, a little bit different. Um, but I mean, like I said, it, it, it happens over the course of a season. And you get used to it, and um, so if, if if that's the case, we got lots of guys that can make that switch. Pretty rare that kids are coming in here to watch you guys practice. I saw them uh, mm -hmm. freak out as you walked, walked yeah. across the. I don't think it was me, <laughs> but uh, but does that um, add, add to the, I know it's a long yeah. camp, but does that add? Yeah, I know it's fun. I think it's a good opportunity, especially you know not having people around quite as much over the last two years, and to you know to bring other people in in into the mix. And uh, I mean, if they're hockey fans and they get a chance to enjoy a day watching practice, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. And I think that we should take advantage of those opportunities and you know realize the position we're in. And um, I think it's good to offer up those chances. We talked last night about forwards playing defense. How would you assess the suitability for Mitch to yeah. kind of slot in there? I assume, yeah. you know, if you guys are maybe looking for offense. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I think he would do well. I think he'd be considered an offensive defenseman, and uh, he'd be able to contribute in that way. And um, you know, I think that we're open to trying anything. Um, so you know, to move him back or you know, Kerf and Callie doing it last night was outstanding. So uh, it just proves that we've got a dynamic group of forwards that can that can. Yeah. You know, doing a multitude of different things. Would you be excited if Coach Kim asked you to play forward if need be? Yeah, I think, you know, let's not rule out a, a line of defensemen going out there up front. Um, and, uh, I mean, if they can play D, we can play forward. So. Jake, walk us through. The one day you said you were feeling really great, and then yeah. the next day it was your back. So what was going on there? Yeah, that was. <laughs> well, I was feeling good. <laughs> No, just some discomfort and tightness that we had to manage and, and look after properly. And, you know, we're getting better every day, so it feels good. Is that something new to the back? Well, um, yeah, th this one was, yeah, Any a little bit. How it happened? Is it just a little wear and tear? I think it was sitting talking to the media all day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me there. <laughs> that had something to do with it. It's, I mean, it's just something I've, I've dealt with my, really, like, the history or, I mean, I've had some back issues when I was younger. Right. So, like, this, you play a long time and a lot of games and what have you, stuff, you know, it adds up and builds up. So, I mean, it's just something we, we've managed really good for a long time, and we have to just continue with it. <clears throat> Great the staff is here. Yeah. I see so many people that work for this team in yeah. this department. How much does that help when it comes no, to a little thing like this? Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, I've said it before, and uh, the guys in there will they'll prolong your career, I think, really. How about getting Raz? Yeah, that's great. Happy uh, they got it done before. He can get here and, and get ready to go. What sort of potential do you see for him still just 22 in terms of Yeah, well? Yeah, I mean, there's lots. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's already got a, a great set of tools, and um, with experience, I think they're only going to get better. What do you think of the forwards dropping back? Yeah, they look they look great, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I had to get I had to get back, so. I don't... <laughs>
I don't want to lose my job. <laughs> Would you be a forward? If no, fun? no, they have, they worked way too hard. Um, for you, was it a mental, uh, tough mentally to kind of stomach going through an injury after what you went through last season? No one wants to start hurting. Yeah, no, and it, it wasn't really an injury. Like, it was just something we had to manage. So it, it was tough, though. Like you train all summer and you get ready, and then all of a sudden something happens. It's kind of frustrating, but. Um, like I said, I feel good, and we're getting better every day. So, yeah, we'll see how things play out. Yep. Everyone, first of all, we, we have we have no update for you on Ben and Dahlstrom here yet. Both uh, went went to get uh, MRIs done today. We just haven't got the results yet. So, have more for you, I assume, tomorrow on that. Um, and on Rasmus, uh, of course, thrilled to to get him signed and, and get him on his way here. Um, it'd be a good opportunity for him, and we're going to welcome him here. He'll go through a process like everybody uh, else in terms of his medicals and physicals and all, all the various things that the, the medical and performance uh, staff goes through with all players, and then we'll determine from there where he's at and get him on the ice shortly thereafter. How about uh, Fraser? You saw him on the list today. Yeah, uh, Fraser banged up his wrist in the game he played the other night, uh, the exhibition game, and... and He's gonna he's gonna miss some time, so I, I don't I don't foresee him getting back into this camp. What sort of uh, development are you expecting from Rasmus in his game once he gets up and running this season? What kind of role can he play for you guys? Well, I think as a young player with that level of talent that he has and the experience that he's gained in the league, uh, you know I think that he, uh, you know, is at the right age now to really start to blossom. He's got the experience of both knowing his strengths and his weaknesses in areas he needs to continue to work on and get better. Uh, in this situation, I was just going to have to come in and kind of get it off up to speed with the guys, which I don't expect to take him too long to do so. And, uh, you know, we, he's an important young player for us that brings a lot to our defense group with his skill set. And you got uh, Jake back today, full practice. Uh, good to see that, I guess. Yes, great. Another good day for him. Obviously, he got through everything here today and talking to him afterward, he felt good. So, you know, all positive on that front. How, how far up is Pierre? Any guesses? Uh, no guesses. I haven't had much of an update there other than I've, I talked to Pierre my, myself, saw him on his way uh, out to the ice today when he was going to skate on his own, and, and he said yesterday was his best day, so that continues to be positive as well, but I've got nothing in terms of timeline of him joining our team. With Timothy, uh, who, who's your top candidate, I guess, to play on, on the right side there? Morgan was saying he felt pretty comfortable. When he's taking reps there. Yeah, Mo's been wanting to take more and more reps there. I think he just kind of sees the situation and knows the more flexibility we have, the better. So uh, he sort of volunteered to take those reps and get himself out there, which we're, which I think is great because uh, I guess I mean we played a game last night with six left-handed shots, or at least started with six left-handed shots, and uh, you know you can kind of see that we need to have more flexibility with all of our players to, to be able to play both sides, and, and Morgan hasn't had a great deal of that. Yeah, uh, so to get that here at this time of year, I think is important. And in terms of how it all shakes out, I think you know we'll have to see where everybody's at, including you know, Rasmus and and Muzzin, and you know get them up and running and and kind of work with it through there. So I wouldn't say um, you know we have a leading candidate necessarily, but I haven't lost sight of the fact that Riley and Brody works very well for us. A lot of talk about uh, forwards playing defense uh, last night, M Mitch. Beside Morgan, there, I imagine maybe if you're trailing in a game, what, what, how would you assess his suitability in that spot? Yeah, that's something you know. The way it worked last night with the the two forwards uh, going back on defense, it was a, a real good sample and a good look at us in a in a game situation. But it's something that Mitch and I have been talking about, and uh, I'm not sure if you guys have caught it to this point. But throughout camp, he's been taking some reps on the back end, and he and I have been talking about it since before camp began about. And there could be opportunities in games where we might want to give him a look on defense and um, you know they, whether we're, we're trying to score a goal or you know playing from behind or whatever the case might be that we might give him some opportunity there and, and uh, just see what that looks like so that's something we'll continue to look at through the preseason and see uh, you know make a determination from there on how we might use it that kind of thing used to happen a lot more I mean I still remember Sir Clara doing it um, do you foresee a time Positions matter less. Well, I think in a lot of ways we're kind of there, which is what leads you to these, you know, 
this evolution of, of looking at it more more seriously with, with the four forwards in particular. I don't know if you'll ever get to five, but um, I think it's just the players themselves have to have a certain skill set and intelligence and speed and, uh, you know, um, and, uh, instinct and all those kind of things I think are really important because, you know, from our, in our sense, you know, last night was, we hope, a one-off and you don't have to resort to something like that. But players move around now and, and uh, forwards end up having to cover and play on defense far more frequently probably than in history uh, of our game. So having those skill sets are important. So I think naturally players younger and younger are going to start to come up with those those type of skill sets. Plus, I think you're going to see a lot more forwards converted to defensemen at younger ages. And, you know, you look at the way Kyle McCarr plays the game. And uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of young kids growing up. They're going to want to want to want to look like that. So uh, I think there's just so much opportunity there. But uh, how close we are to, to making it on, on a full time basis, I, I'm not quite sure. But I think it's something to continue to experiment with. And you know, uh, Mitch is a right shot. He's a very high, highly offensive player that can help us. It allows us to put on another high impact forward like Nylander in that case, and something worth looking at for us, I think. When you're thinking about getting creative like that, particularly with Mitch, do you, is there data that you look at to, to do that, or is it just, hey, we know we can trust this guy? Yeah, it's. You know, there's areas of our game where we think offensively, you know, we're, we would like to improve upon in terms of the transition and, and a, a play along the offensive blue line, the offensive zone. And, and uh, you know, Morgan's a real standout for us in terms of what he can contribute offensively there. But, we, you know, at times you want to have another guy, in particular a right shot, to be able to help with that. Um, you know, having Rasmus in the fold, that helps, but uh, certainly... You know, Brody and Muzzin and Giordano can contribute in their own way, but it's a little different feel there with someone like Mitch. And to me, it's just the more and more I watch how we move around in the offensive zone. Mitch spends a lot of time up at the, up at the blue line as it is. Obviously, the power play, he plays up, up there quite a bit. Uh, so it was just a little more natural for me to consider that because he's, he's done it at the NHL level. He's ran the power play from the top in, in a five forward type of look in, in junior. So he's got lots of experience uh, doing that. So that's why you consider him because the more and more you watch the clips, that's what stands out. So I would say for me, it's more knowing Mitch's skill set. And, and, you know, I've got a pretty good library of, of he's a forward on the shift. He's, he's in the defense spot and quarterbacking things and at times even defending. So I think that's sort of why we came to that conclusion. Do you think Alex and Pedersen at this point in his career to play the middle more than you? Just with experience? Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to say with experience that, uh, you know, the more you've done it, the more comfortable it becomes. Um, I, th I think that would really be it. I don't know if his skill set or anything like that has changed. That's always been there. But, yeah, I think the more you do anything, um, it's important. He hadn't spent a great deal of time at center in, in his NHL career. Um, but now with us, you know, he's moved around enough there that I think he's confident and comfortable there. I, I still think he's going to be a guy that will move around our lineup. Uh, that's just the, the type of player he is and how it sort of works in our lineup with our team, the way that it's built when healthy. Um, but I, I've liked what he's done for us through the camp so far here. He looks good, looks confident. And, I mean, last night, is, I mean, we talk, we've talked a lot about, you know, Kerf's versatility and how he serves the team and, and does whatever is required. <laughs> Last night was a great example of that. And I think we've got another guy in very similar in Yarncroft that can do do things like he did last night, but also, as we've talked about, play both positions in, at center and